a ton of businesses rely on the last two months of the year to do 80% of their annual sales. Huge, huge number, right? So if you're one of those businesses, you want an edge. You want to know what are those marketing strategies, those, those trending strategies that will give you that edge to be able to dip into the, the massive consumer rush for shopping, right? Well, guess what? That's what today's show is about. We're going to be revealing the secret sauce, talking and outlining marketing strategies that you can implement this year to move that needle, to take advantage of this consumer attention. The show is going to be awesome. Let's get right into it. This is Don't Fear Grit with Rob Taormina. Marketing strategies and advertising technologies to help you build a better business. So the shopping time from November to December is crazy. If you are a a regular retailer and you go to the stores, if you go to your local mall, you know, number one, it's hard to get parking, right? Number two, the lines are going to be crazy, crazy long. And number three, you're running the risk that what you're going for is out of stock and you're going to be competing with all of the crazy, crazy shoppers. Well, that's the time period that we're in right now. This is the the last few months of the last quarter of 2022 and businesses clamor to try to get as much attention as they can during this time because because there are a lot of businesses actually that rely on the last two months. In fact, they do 80% of the sales just in the last two months. I know that sounds crazy. If you're a business owner, you're like, how could I operate a business where 80% of my total income is the last two months? Well, guess what? There are businesses like that out there. But regardless of whether or not you're that business or you're just a normal business that has regular income, we know that there's massive consumer attention during the last two months. Not only is there consumer attention, but they are primed for spending money, which means as a business owner, you should have a plan. You should have a strategy that positions your business in front of those consumers so that you can take advantage of that. You want to move the needle? This is the time to do it. Now, as a business owner myself, I own an an agency, Talk IQ Media, right? So I get to see two different perspectives. Perspective one is from the consumer side. What are the consumer trends? the consumer buying, what's the buying behavior today, right? And so we get to analyze that data and we're very much aware of how consumers are actually behaving. But it's unique because we also get to see businesses. And what we're seeing from the business side of it is during this time period, there's a lot of people buying advertising space, right? And what happens when there's a lot of people buying advertising space? Guess what? It drives up the price. So the cost per acquisition during this time period also goes up. So what does that mean for you guys? Well, it means you got to come up with a really good plan. Now, just because it's expensive, just because it's incredibly competitive, doesn't mean it's impossible. There's always a solution to every um, uh, every challenge, right? And so we're going to be talking about today, what are those marketing strategies? And then also I'm going to reveal maybe some, some bonus stuff as well to help guide you guys through the next few weeks to close out the year strong. And I'm going to reveal a little bit. My bonus actually has to do with what happens after, right? I don't want to just leave you guys with what to do up until the day. Well, what happens when that day passes? What next? Well, we're going to be discussing that today because it's super, super important. Now, some interesting stats uh, about consumer behavior is that number one, we know that online retail is very, very strong. We're talking about over a trillion dollars is going to be spent between the end of November and the week leading up to Christmas by the consumer market. That's a lot of money. Money, right, so so you know their 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 pocketbooks, the consumers' pocketbooks are padded with these dollars. I guess they they think they have. That's another conversation altogether, right? And with, they're padded with these dollars that they're already allocated to. This is was what I'm spending for shopping. So how do you get some of those dollars for your business? How do you actually compete in a very crowded advertising market, in a very crowded social media space, and very crowded even traditional media space? How do you compete with all that stuff? Well, there's definitely things that you could do. There's there's things that you could do that'll give your business an edge, not just for the moment, 
but actually for the moments even thereafter. And uh, let's just get right into today today's show. As you guys know, we got some topics, and we give two minutes for every single topic here. And uh, let me just uh, cue this up. And uh, let's see here. The first one. There you go. First one. When to start your marketing um, for the holiday season? Well, there's there's a lot of arguments, and I th- I know that you know you observe when other businesses are starting, and I think they start they try to push that earlier and earlier this year. Um, and I actually did a whole show on this a while ago. I actually saw Christmas advertising. Uh, locally in August. Now, I think that is absurd. I think that's way, 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 way too early. And I think that's actually going to hurt you as a business. Um, You can actually start too early. But I think that the ideal time to start is October 31st. That first piece of messaging, I think that deliverable right there around that time or maybe the day after, I think that's an, an ideal time. I don't think that you should go for broke and double down immediately, but I think that you can start softening up the market. I think you can introduce your messaging, maybe tease some of the things that you're going to be um, uh, presenting to people around that time. And then as we get closer to that that big holiday rush, uh, which is around Black Friday, Cyber Monday, that's when you go for broke, right? But I think a great time to start is right around that Halloween time. October 31st, maybe the day after, and start to introduce your messaging. Uh, The next one is update imagery. This is something that I think a lot of people completely forget to do this. They will maybe come up with what sales they're going to have. They might actually decorate their store. If you're someone who has a storefront where people go to, people might even take their website and maybe even add some nice little fun um, icons or pictures, right? But what they fail to do is to update the imagery on all of the brand assets that you have. So you might be asking, well, what, what does that mean? What are brand assets? Well, a good example of that is all your social media. Every single brand asset that you have, and I'll just give one example and then you can sort of fill in the blank, is um, Facebook, right? Let's say your business has a Facebook page. It better, by the way. By the way, if you're listening to the show and you don't have a, a, a Facebook page, I, I think right there you need to stop, right? But And because you need to start developing those assets. But um, your, your business, you have a Facebook page for your business. What you need to do is your cover photo and your, the profile picture at the bare minimum needs to be now redesigned for the holiday season. Add fresh coloring, fresh imagery, um, fresh um, you know uh, taglines, right? Feature maybe products that you're going to be really pushing heavy. Maybe that's where you can give that little first little teaser. But I strongly recommend updating your imagery across the board when it comes to now this holiday season. Because number one, it tells your entire audience you're going to be doing something. Number two, it reminds your audience that you are doing something and that you are selling things. And number three, it injects new life and it triggers that algorithm saying saying to the algorithms, whether it be Facebook and Twitter and YouTube, everyone else like Instagram, right? It tells them you're fresh, you're current, and this, and that you want to be preferred when, uh, when, when you are putting out content. So there's a lot of great advantages to do that. So I think October 31st, um, I, I know I, I'm, I'm going backwards again, but October 31st, maybe the day after is a great time to start. And one of the things that you can start right away is changing that imagery. Uh, next one up, sell solution, not the product. Some of you guys, you see this, you immediately know exactly what I'm talking about, but I don't think the holidays are a time for you to sell products. All right, I'm going to pause there. Now, if you're watching the show, you can see my reaction. If you're just listening, I appreciate all of my podcast listeners out there. Um, you're always welcome to find the show uh, on your favorite, uh, you know, uh, video consuming platforms like YouTube or whatever. We are we are there, right? Um, but if you're just listening, then I, I, do you understand when I'm saying don't sell product during the holiday season? Now, the, uh, let me explain that a little bit. You are always selling your product throughout the entire year. So if you simply push out a product that you're already selling, it's not new. It's not different. There's nothing unique about it. There's no differentiator, right? 
what's different about the holiday season is people are looking for something that's different, that's going to grab their attention. Well, what are things that grabs their attention and sells them without selling them a product? You are providing them a solution. That's what you need to do. So you have to, basically, you do an audit of your, all of your products, and you then you, you separate the products that you're going to be maybe pushing for various sales, right? For Whether it be Black Friday, Cyber Monday, or, or for the Christmas rush, right? You isolate those, and then what you're going to do is you're going to map out what are the problems that this product actually is the solution for. And then you're going to write out what are those solutions. Those are the advertising now pieces. That's the material that you're going to leverage when you're pushing out the product because you're not going to actually sell the product directly. You're going to indirectly sell it by pushing out the solution because people buy solutions. They're not going to buy the product, right? That's going to be your differentiator. Remember, the, 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 the space is very crowded. Not with just buyers. Remember what I was saying? As a, from my perspective, I get to see both, right? Because I manage a lot of advertising on behalf of my clients. And what I see is there are a lot of businesses clamoring for attention, a lot. Well, how do you compete with a crowded market? Well, you got to be a little different, right? A lot of you guys are selling the same product as your competitors, right? So therefore, if you're selling the same or very similar product, then your approach has to be different. And I guarantee you, if you sit down and map out what are problems that my product is the solution for? And then you write copy that's centered around solution. It's solution-based sales, not product-based sales. Uh, next uh, idea is a gift guide. Now, you have to think of yourself not just as a business owner when you're gearing up for various holiday rushes. You got to put yourself in the mindset of the consumer and that specifically means think how a consumer buys. What are the moments leading up to the moment that they actually make a purchase? What do they do? And okay, so I like to think of it, and, I, and I, I'll, I'll draft consumer avatars for my clients. And I do various avatars because some clients are actually reach multiple demographics of people, right? But here's one example. I've got an avatar, and I say, okay, avatar one, what do they do? They don't know what they want to give their loved ones a gift. Let's say it's a husband, wife, right? The husband doesn't know what they want. So what do they do first? Oh, they ask friends. They go and Google best gift ideas for a wife. It sounds silly, right? But do you realize how many people are actually doing that? A tremendous amount. Get ahead of the game. Get in the mindset of this consumer and become that option, knowing that they're going to be searching for it, right? So become that option. So one great thing that you could do is develop a gift guide for certain different categories, a gift guide for husbands, a gift guide for wives, a gift guide for children, fill in the blank, a gift guide under $10, a bundle guide, right? Create these guides and you can create little um, graphics centered around it. You can create categories on your website and sell based on guides. You'll be surprised at how much more sales you will get by simply not adding more product, by simply just creating gift guides with the products you already have. Uh, let's get to this next one. I love this category. This next category that we're going to be talking about is huge. It is huge right here. And I'm going to start if, if you're, again, if you watch the show, you're going to see the timer, the two minutes started. I, I think I might go past the two minutes on this particular topic. And that is after Christmas. What is the after Christmas marketing strategy for your business? Now, we know, now if, if you follow this and you're a data nerd like myself, we know that December 22nd is the second highest um, uh, sales for shopping in the entire year. We also know that the first one is actually the Saturday right before that, depending on where Christmas lands. So that's number one and two. Did you also know that, that in the top five shopping days is actually December 26th and 27th? Did you know? Do you know why December twenty sixth and twenty seventh is in the top five shopping days? Because of returns. Now, returns don't have to be losses. You can actually take a, a, a return. You can turn it around into an advantage and turn it into a great sale. You can actually upsell. There's so many things you can do now. 
knowing that there are a massive amount of returns. 78% of consumers actually return products between de- December 26th and January 1st, right? With most being de- December 26th and 27th, right? We know this. So knowing this, why not create a marketing campaign ahead of time that actually activates either a few days before or activates literally 1201 on December 26th that says maybe Santa didn't get you what you asked for for Christmas. Now, maybe that one line, all of a sudden, boom, you got a light bulb right now and you're like, oh my gosh, I get it. And you're going to run with it, right? But maybe you need to take some more time to really understand this. This is a huge opportunity because it's a neglected time. Earlier, and I've said this a few times, I know because Talk IQ Media, I manage advertising, right? So I know that the advertising market is very, very crowded, driving us up cost. Guess what happens on December 26th for, for ad buyers? There's a massive drop-off, more than 50% drop-off. That means that there is advertising opportunities available. Buyers decrease, ad space though um, increases. Guess what? It becomes more affordable. So now you can get the same, if not more, consumer attention for less money. It's amazing. So what I recommend, don't wait for that day. Start now. Draft your ad strategy for after Christmas Put a few bucks in it. Don't just rely on the free stuff, which is like just creating some posts, sending out some emails, doing some SMS uh, marketing stuff. No, put a few bucks behind this. Get your message in front of the right people and craft a really cool message. For example, like the one I gave earlier, did Santa not give you? Did you not get the gift that you asked Santa for for Christmas this year? Knowing that there's lots of returns, right? Listen, in the um, uh, in the in the fashion in the, uh, industry, uh, the fashion which is clothes and, and even shoes and things like that, that represents the biggest category of returns, followed by um, uh, electronics, and then there's a big drop off. Um, but knowing this stuff, you could just Google this stuff, right? You don't need to listen to the show and to to get what what are the biggest returns, right? You have to figure this out for your business. Right, where I'm talking to a really big audience here, broad spectrum of different categories, different industries of businesses. What you have to take from this show is now, all right, I get the basic concept. I'm going to do research for my industry and and craft a plan for my business based on this information that that I'm getting. That's how you're going to win, right? I'm I'm giving you the little tips. I'm pushing you in the right direction and revealing some interesting truths to you guys. You, the way that you take advantage of it now is applying it to your business, customizing what we're talking about to your business, and that's what's going to really give you an edge. There's, again, guys, after Christmas, huge opportunities. Don't drop the ball there. The opportunity does not end, does not end December 25th. It doesn't. It continues. Remember, December 26th, 27th are in the top shopping days of all time because of returns. Take advantage of that. That doesn't have to be a loss. It could be a huge game. Um, And I was going to give a little, you know what, I'm going to do it. I'm going to head and I'm going to talk about a bonus here. Remarketing. I've talked about remarketing often. Um, but just in case you guys are new to the show and you haven't caught me sit talking about remarketing, um, if you guys are going to be launching or have already launched some type of incredible marketing campaign to take advantage of the last uh, two months of the quarter for 2022, have a remarketing strategy already in place, ready to go. You better be having your tracking pixels and archiving all of this data and have a plan in place for now. You're going to remarket, not just after Christmas though, you're going to be remarketing during. And here's a really great example right now, guys, I'm going to give you a detailed game plan that I don't care what industry you're you're in, what product you're selling, this product process that I'm about to, to unveil could be used everywhere. It's literally universal. So here is the example and here's uh, what you should be doing. You have a piece of content. Let's just say it's a video. It's a short video, it's a 15 second video and you put a couple bucks behind it, right? And you get people to watch this video. There's a link, they click the link and the video is about a certain product that you have on your website. What you wanna do, obviously this video The link on the video, this ad, should link directly to the product on your website. On that product page, you need to embed 
your tracking pixel. It needs to archive the data and identify that person who watched the video for let's say of the 15 seconds, they watched it for eight seconds. They then clicked the link and they went to your website, but they didn't purchase. Now having that tracking pixel along the way, you're going to be able to identify these moments. So what do you want to do next? This is how you remarket. This is level one remarketing. You should have another piece of content already developed that literally is now going to talk to that individual who already saw that video, the first video, clicked over to your website and didn't purchase. And this is where you literally can just talk right to them. Hey, I noticed that you clicked our first video. You didn't purchase the product, but before you go, here is a $1 off coupon, whatever. You could fill in the blank, right? You're going to remarket to that individual and you're going to get them back. Why? Because they're still in your sales funnel. They're only going to drop out of your sales funnel if you allow them to. Remarketing keeps them in that sales funnel so that they convert. Because if, in fact, they saw, they watched 50% or more of that video they're interested, if they click the link from that video to your website, guess what? They're even more interested. Now, even if they dropped off at that point and they went to your website and they went off, they're still an interested party. They were curious. You need to find out who they are and where they are in the sales funnel. That happens with the remarketing. That's why you send a remarketing campaign. Now, you don't have to spend a lot of money here. Now, you, you spend more money if, you want, if you're ready to scale, if you want a bigger audience, but you only have to spend a couple bucks, five bucks a day, and you can have a decent size audience and remarket them back into your sales funnel. They don't have to leave forever. You're losing money. You're losing sales without a proper remarketing campaign. That's level one. Level two, I'm actually going to skip level two and level three and go like a level four remarketing. This is after Christmas now. Now, you have all of this data because you have properly, because I've told you now, hopefully you've listened, right? I've told you. You can't say, oh, I didn't know because I've told you many times and I'm telling you again right now, especially all our brand new listeners, which I love you guys, appreciate you guys, but have that tracking pixel, right? So you have that tracking pixel. It's been archiving all of that data and hopefully you're creating your segmented audiences. Now, after Christmas, you can remarket them for various other things. For example, through that tracking pixel, you can identify people who bought a certain product. Now, you as the business owner know other products that complement that. Let's say they didn't buy them yet. Guess what you're going to do? You're going to remarket to that individual and now show them and direct them to the other complementary products. Okay? Uh, another version of remarketing after Christmas is you've identified people that came to your website, surfed around, maybe even had an abandoned cart or two, right? But didn't buy anything yet. You're going to remarket to them. Again, saying, hey, I, 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 you know, you can even be so direct and say, hey, I know that you were interested last month in this particular product. We, we are running a great sale. Why don't you check it out? Or you can be like, hey, I noticed that you were checking out this product. Why don't you come back and check out our, this other product? Maybe you can make an assumption based on the data that you have that, in fact, maybe that product wasn't right for them, but based on their search behavior, on your website, you know that they were interested in something else. You're going to remarket to them. So those are some lower level remarketing ideas. But guys, I want to inspire you to do something great. Don't let this holiday season pass without you doing something different that moves the needle in the right direction for your business. It, it only takes work. R r listen, just think about the name of the show. Don't fear grit. Don't fear the hard work. Don't fear the stuff that you don't know how to do yet. There's other ways that you can figure that out, either yourself or you can outsource it and hire companies like mine, like Talk IQ Media, for example, to do it for you. But the fact is, don't fear the hard work because the hard work will net you an incredible positive success. Guys, let me just get back to my screen over here. I appreciate you guys. As always, if you found value, do me a favor. 
What can help me out? Like, comment, share, subscribe, do all that wonderful things, right? But you know what I would really like? Share it with one person that you feel, man, this one person would really benefit. Maybe it's someone that works for you. Maybe it's a colleague. Maybe it's a, it's someone else that, that also owns a business in your community and you're like, you know what? I want to help them out because there was value here. I'm going to share it with them. Do me a favor. Can you share this show? Because that's what really jazzes me up. I love growing this community. We've got an amazing community of people, leaders, growing leaders, aspiring leaders, entrepreneurs, super, super successful people from the around the world. Don't Fear Grit is awesome. I love you guys. And if you don't hear from me uh, before the holidays, listen, happy holidays, Merry Christmas. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. But we will be doing more shows, so definitely check out, check it out. But if you're busy, I get it. Um, hopefully, I'll see you for the new year, guys. But guys, thanks again for checking out Don't Fear Grit. Take care.